And these are things we have to start seeing in recognition, I think, anyway, of the economic downturn and its connection to the tar sands itself. Of course, recently, very recently, we've seen the financial meltdown take place. The, the value of the dollar has taken a nosedive uh, because oil prices have taken a nosedive. And uh, the result is that uh, even though our our manufacturing exports may be more competitive than they were a year or two years ago. Uh, the problem is, of course, that they, we can't sell into the U.S. market because it is depressed. The U.S. is into re economic recession, and as a result, we find it very difficult to, to sell our products there uh, in, in the same way. So the result is still a, a stagnation of the manufacturing sector itself. The thing I think we need to recognize from all of this, however, is that this is not just a cyclical thing like this and that. It's a problem of w w how we understand the economy and how we understand that it's important to be able to put in place the kinds of incentives that are going to have, help, help certain sectors of the economy to, to build, grow, and develop at critical moments. The problem with what has happened is that uh, the, the current government, and for that matter the government before it, allowed the resource sector to take off, allowed the resource sector to get ahead of us to the point where we return to being a country that are hewers of wood and drawers of water and back into that same kind of colonial ma mindset in many ways. The result has been an undermining of the manufacturing sector and when the Prime Minister says, as he said, been saying over and over again until very recently, the fundamentals are sound in this country. Nothing to worry about. Well, I'm sorry, but the fundamentals are not sound, and the structural imbalance and distortion that we see here is an example of how unsound uh, the, the, uh, the fundamentals really are. Let's now move to the question, well, what about the tar sands and the environment crisis? And we've heard some eloquent statements already this evening about this. But uh, again, it doesn't hurt to, to walk through with a few visuals as to what the, what the, uh, what the real impacts are going to be. You have to, we have to keep in mind that, that very, you know, a couple of year, a year ago or so, I should say, there was a report that was put out that uh, by the Environment uh, uh, Defense uh, uh, Council, Society Council? Environmental Defense. Environmental Defense, sorry, Environmental Defense. Uh, put this report out which really caught the imagination in the media and the press and that is to say the extent to which the tar sands really is environmentally the most destructive project on the planet the most destructive project on the earth itself and this is uh, part of the picture that I think we need to understand and grasp that and to see to what extent that is the case and how the tar sands continues to trigger an environmental crisis we heard earlier from what David said uh, about uh, the, the fact that greenhouse gas emissions from the tar sands are three to five times of that of conventional oil, and conventional oil is bad enough, as, as, uh, as Dave said. But we're, we're dealing with the fact that the, now, as a result of all of that, is that the tar sands are, have become uh, really the, the, the Canada's number, number one greenhouse gas emitter. And by that I mean its growth trajectory is going to uh, dominate all of the uh, industries with regards to, uh, to greenhouse gas emissions. When we look at this picture and this particular chart here, we can see that there are significant uh, uh, impacts uh, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, and particularly when we see that when the government itself, instead of accepting uh, a, a policy of putting absolute targets on greenhouse gas emissions and instead allowed for an intensity target approach, then we see a huge difference taking place because intensity targets means you take the product itself like a barrel of oil and you say we're going to reduce the amount of greenhouse gas emissions from the production of that, uh, of that barrel of oil. Well, that's fine. Except when you look at an industry like the tar sands industry that's going to grow and grow and grow five times over the next 10 to 15 years, and you see it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter how much you, uh, you, you have intensity targets in place, you're going to have that growth take place. Instead of having an absolute target right across the industry itself and putting that and imposing those absolute targets on the industry. 
What we're faced with here is a situation, and this chart shows it, that in 2008, 68 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions are projected from the tar sands. Uh, by, by the year 2012, the number is 132 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions. And by 2015, 168 million uh, uh, tons of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. This is the problem that we're faced with, with the growth cycle that exists with regards to the tar sands itself. But the problem is not just there. The problem is the strip mining of the boreal forest, again, as other people were mentioning, and what that really means. It's not just strip mining a beautiful forest area, which is bad enough. It's not just even turning it into a moonscape, which is even worse. But the problem really comes back to the fact that it's the boreal forests, the northern lungs of the planet, that are, for all intents and purposes, nature's carbon sink. That's how nature deals with carbon emissions. It absorbs it through the trees. And when we rip that out, when we rip a huge, massive hole in the, in the northern part of, uh, of Alberta and into uh, parts of the Northwest Territories, we are really ripping apart that carbon sink. So how contradictory can you get than that? And you can bring up all the carbon sequestration you want. You cannot really replace what the forests themselves are doing and naturally do to protect that. Water depletion is a huge uh, part of the, the, the problem, as again has been mentioned by others this evening. And it's water depletion because uh, two, two, uh, it takes two barrels of water or up to as much as really five barrels of water to, to produce one <coughs> barrel of oil. The problem is, from the tar sands that is, the problem with that is that, uh, is that this is a very fragile watershed. It is one of the most precious in the world, as I indicated before. It, it's not just the Athabasca, but the Athabasca ties in with the, with the Mackenzie, ties in with the North Saskatchewan. That whole maze of rivers up there is a very precious watershed system. And it is being re really systematically depleted. What's happening is that, uh, is that they cannot move barges now up and down the Mackenzie River uh, because there's been a draining of the Athabasca River below it and has created huge problems for, uh, for many of the indigenous peoples and other, uh, uh, other people in, in, in the uh, Northwest Territories in terms of moving their, 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 their products and their ship, shipments up and down north and south. And so those kinds of problems are magnified. It's magnified also because the Athabasca ties in with, with the North Saskatchewan River and you have the up greater alley opening up and building up along uh, the, 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 the North Saskatchewan River and huge amounts of water are being taken from there. And water scientists like uh, David Schindler, uh, who is the, the world's, one of the world's foremost water scientists, we're, lucky, we're very lucky to have him in that part of the country, and he's saying we're making a huge mess out of this, and we're we're just we're in the on the verge of triggering an environmental disaster as a result of what is happening with the water itself. But the water depletion has to be is actually compounded by water contamination, and again the kind of cesspools that were referred to, the tar, toxic tar ponds that exist, and there is seepage that is going on from those tar ponds into. Uh, the groundwater systems, and in turn, that is affecting uh, what what is affecting both the wildlife and human life in uh, uh, points downstream such as Fort Chippewyan. And uh, the health hazards hazards there are very serious. The cancer rates have been growing astronomically. There are huge health problems for the people in that region. In the case of uh, moose in that region, they have found uh, arsenic traces that are 453 times what is normally allowed in terms of arsenic as a result of what is happening in the tar sands. And fish have been deformed, as you see through this, uh, this right-hand uh, photo here on the, on the screen. Fish are deformed, and this is the staple diet of the indigenous peoples in Fort Mackay, in Fort Chippewyan, and many other places in the region. <coughs> 